flat nerve model. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of the systemic nature of these nerves. You can look at a small region of the body and only see a little bit of it, but this gives you a much better idea of how everything works together. I'm first going to start at the spinal cord. Now this is not the best model for the spinal cord, but I just want to orient you to a few features. There is the spinal cord first of all. Here where it becomes a point, we have conus medullaris. And conus medullaris is going to emanate one singular nerve coming right down the middle. That's called phylum terminal. Around it, all of these strands of nerves create the cauda equina or the horse tail. So think of someone's ponytail, think of a tail on a horse. Now getting more into the peripheral nerves here, we first of all have this one coming straight down in the neck. That is the phrenic nerve. That's going to go from the neck down to the diaphragm to innervate it so that you can breathe. Now this grouping of nerves here and here, those are the brachial plexes. So that's C5 through T1. Those are going to go into your upper limb. So we'll start here with the upper limb and the branches of the brachial plexus. Please note that this side of the model is an anatomical position. The other one is not. So when I show it to you on both sides, it's not going to look identical. We'll start first with this one that you see going around the surgical neck of the humerus. That is the axillary nerve. So here it is on the anatomically um, correct side. Here it is on the other side. Those two don't really change positions. We then get to, we see kind of an M-like structure in the brachial plexus. So there's one part of the M, there's the part that comes down in the middle of the M, and there's the other branch. So the more lateral part here, that is called the musculocutaneous nerve, and I can follow that down here. That one is actually not on your list, but you should probably know that, um, just if you care to know a lot about the brachial plexus. Here's the other one. So that's musculocutaneous. The one running down the middle here, and going all the way down the middle to the hand, that is the median nerve. That's median with an N. Now over here, here's our median nerve. So remember, it's coming down from the middle of our M. Here it's coming down, but since this arm is twisted, we lose it a bit underneath the radius here. And it continues, it actually continues somewhere in here, and we're not really seeing it. So that's the other, uh, that's the middle part of the brachial plexus. Here's the other side. So we're on the ulnar side. This is the ulnar nerve. Notice that that is coming straight down along our ulna right here. But on the other side, since again, we have a twisted arm, here's the ulnar nerve. And then we're gonna kinda lose it until we pick it up over here. So over here we've got, here's the radial nerve, here's the ulnar nerve. Median is right here and we lose it. Now moving further down, we get to the intercostal nerves here. Remember intercostal between the ribs. And then we get down to quite a few branches here. So the first branch we're just gonna ignore, it's called the subcostal nerve, but that is not on your list. We're gonna start with these two here, that shared common trunk. This is called the iliohypogastric nerve and then the ilioinguinal nerve. They're alphabetical if you have trouble remembering the order. This one that's gonna swing really laterally here, that is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve or lateral cutaneous femoral. If you're having trouble remembering that, think about the name. It's going very lateral 
It's pretty superficial, so it's gonna be right up by where the skin is. It's going to follow the, fem uh, the femur as well, so lateral, cutaneous, femoral. And here it is on this side. Now this little nub that you see right here, this little trunk that's then gonna split, that's genitofemoral. So here's that one on this other side. And then we have one that's a little bit bigger than most of those others, and it's following the shaft of the femur on this side. That is the femoral nerve. So there it is on that left leg. Here it is on the right leg. Now, just like with the arms, please notice that the one on the right is in anatomical position. The one on the left is not. So you're gonna get a slightly different look to that branching pattern. The big one is always gonna be sciatic. So even though femoral is a little bigger than most of the others, sciatic is even much bigger than it. So here's sciatic and you can follow that down, which we will in just a minute here. Here's sciatic here and here's the rest of it. Remember, that's gonna be going down the posterior portion of the lower limb. Now this one is the obturator nerve. That's gonna innervate the medial thigh. So if you can remember, it's the one innervating that, uh, that area where your thighs touch. That is going to be obturator. So here it is on this side. Here it is on this side. It's actually a little easier to follow in this model on the left side. Now we do have some branching going on here in the sciatic nerve. That's pretty important. And if you looked at the video for the leg model, you've already gotten a taste of that. So we're gonna follow the sciatic nerve down and we're gonna get a split about here. Where that split is is actually highly variable. It can be much closer to the knee like this model. It can be a lot higher up too and pretty much anywhere in between. On this model, they're showing it in this lower region. So the side that is closest to me right here, that is going to be the tibial nerve. The other branch is the common fibular nerve. Now the tibial nerve, we can actually follow that all the way down and we see it going to the bottom of the foot. But common fibular is going to go anteriorly. So I'm gonna show this to you on both sides because this is where this model can get kind of dicey. We would follow common fibular and it's going to split. So here's one of the nerves it splits into, here's the other. This one right here is going to be superficial fibular nerve. This one right here that is following the tibia is going to be the deep fibular nerve. So that's going to go along the top of the foot. So is superficial fibular, but you're losing a lot of that. On this side, we can take a look and understand that branching pattern a little more clearly. Here's just a little bit of common fibular here. Now this one, if we follow that down, it's actually branching out all over the top of the foot. This one is superficial fibular. This one, is deep fibular. Now this is not a perfect representation, but we can follow this branch of deep fibular to go between the first and second toe. That's going to be the portion of the foot that deep fibular innervates. So if we go from lateral to medial, we get superficial fibular nerve and then the common fibular nerve. There are other nerves on this model you do not need to know them. So don't worry about it. And if you're real curious, you can always look it up in your atlas.